two things in life that I really enjoy. The smell of fresh bread and the smell of fresh coffee. And I truly enjoy cutting the crust off the end of a fresh loaf of bread. So light on the inside and the crust is so crunchy. Hi, I'm Dan. I'm Dad in the Kitchen. And today we're going to make a fresh loaf of white bread. For this recipe, you'll need 325 grams of water, 5 grams of sugar, 10 grams of yeast, 10 grams of salt, 5 grams of bread improver, 20 grams of oil, 50 grams of unsalted butter, and 560 grams of bread flour. So now we're going to have to activate and proof the yeast. So in the water, which is about 40 degrees, nice, pleasantly warm, we'll add the sugar and the yeast, and then we'll mix it in until the sugar's all dissolved and the yeast has all been moistened with the water. Then we'll set this aside until the yeast is proofed. And you know that it's done this when it puffs up with a nice layer of foam on top. And if it doesn't do this, don't continue because your yeast is dead and you need to get some fresh stuff. As you can see, this took me about seven minutes to occur, but it has happened as quick as three. So place the yeast mixture into the bowl with the oil and butter. Then we'll add in the flour, bread improver and salt on top. Place the bowl back on the mixer and we'll attach the bread hook and give the dough a mix on the lowest setting just for it to combine all the ingredients and to make sure that we don't have any dry spots any dry ingredients sitting anyway. Now we'll scrape down the sides and the bottom of the bowl just to incorporate the last of the ingredients into the dough mass and to ensure that there's no pockets of dry ingredients sitting at the bottom of the bowl underneath the dough because that can sometimes happen. And now we'll just let this mix and all up it mix for about 10 minutes in my side my mixer and if you're going to do this by hand it'll take about 15 20 minutes depending on how well you knead and how well you, your dough forms and i'll show you a little test at the end of the kneading process to know when it's done if you just watch you can see the, the dough becoming smoother and smoother inside the bowl i stop it from time to time to give it a test to see how it's going and you can do this as many times as you need. After a while you get to know what the dough looks like and you don't have to do it quite so often. This is the window test. As you can see this dough is just being lightly stretched and it's getting thinner and thinner without tearing which means the gluten strands are developed and it's doing all the things it should do. So from here we'll tip the dough out onto the bench and then we'll, get, we'll stretch the dough, fold it back and each time we do that it gets a little bit shorter as the tension builds on the outside surface of the dough, form it into a ball, push in the dough and it should bounce back. Then we'll place the dough ball into a lightly oiled bowl. And then spray the surface of the dough and then cover with cling wrap, place in the microwave that's had two mugs of water boiled inside it, place into diagonal corners to provide a nice warm and humid environment for the dough to proof in and it will fill the bowl. Have a lightly oiled bread tin here. As you can see the dough mass itself has expanded and filled the bowl. Carefully take off the cling wrap because we'll use that again shortly and then we'll tip the dough out onto the bench form it out into a rectangle which is one and a half times the length of the width of the bread tin. I choose to do this by hand but you could use a rolling pin if you so decide it's your choice. 
I just choose to do it by hand because I can control it a bit better. Don't need a whole lot of expensive equipment to make bread. So as you fold over the end of the bread, just make sure that you, you, you seal it down to make sure that there's no air pockets inside the, the dough itself as you're forming the loaf. Otherwise you end up with great big air pockets inside the finished loaf and that's not what you want. And if the this roll becomes too wide, just tuck and fold the, the sides of it in into the loaf and it'll just distribute out nicely. And then we'll tip the log over. Then we'll pinch the, the seam along the bottom of the loaf, fold the ends over, and then fold, pinch that into that bottom seam, turn it around, do the same thing, fold, fold it up so it's nice and smooth on the end, and then pinch it into the bottom seam. We'll reconstitute the shape of the loaf, and then we'll place it into the bread tin seam side down, then we'll cover that with plastic wrap and put it back into the microwave to prove and it'll take close to another hour you want it to get over the top of the tin here we go it's puffed right up now it goes into a 200 a preheated 230 degree oven for 30 minutes and i turn it down to 210 after the first 10 minutes comes out nice and golden brown on top tip it straight out of the tin and give the loaf a tap and it should sound hollow and you know it's cooked. If you want to further test it, put a thermometer in and it, the internal temperature should be greater than 93 degrees Celsius. And it's good to go. This bread is great for making sandwiches with. It's also a nice to eat with a meal or it's just nice to eat on its own. Give the top a little bit of a brush with some butter. Thanks for watching. I'm Dan. I'm Dad in the Kitchen. If you liked, hit the like button, subscribe share with your friends and come back and check out next week. Thanks.